What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're working on the chow again. I'm gonna finish up the rear end so we don't have to worry about that. I got my tail light, I got my painted fender from last time and I got my wiring. Now we're gonna have to take a different route into the fender because we deleted that whole section where the wire used to run into so we're gonna have to do some modifications drill some holes route the wire a different way i also got some locking nuts for the bolts so they are secure they cannot come loose what we're also gonna do i got a different jet for the carburetor now there is a 70 jet in it that it's way too rich. When I was cleaning up my parts bin, I found a 64 jet. So that should be better than the 70 that's in there right now. It's not perfect yet. We cannot really test it, but it should be better. And it won't spit out so many fuel and oil out of the exhaust. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to take out the wheel again and mount it for the very last time. But yeah, yeah, let's just get started. Remove this whole section because I'm gonna have to drill some holes and be I cannot mount the fender without removing this whole section, so. So we got the whole back section off of there and as you can see there are small little taps right here where the cable runs and then it goes to that hole. What I got is like these small yeah, bushings would I say, not really bushings but protectors from steel. They protect your wire against metal like this. Now I only got two because I was stupid and didn't take the whole box so yeah we're gonna have to fix that but what i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove this air filter get this right in here and see if i can get the wire through there take the air box off and the smallest one should fit in here now i got it in there now the big question is can i get these wires through there we'll see now getting one through there is gonna be easy it's gonna be the next one that's hard Okay, one connector is true, but the second connector is true there. So, I got it all the way through there, snug fit. Okay, now this can go over here. Wire runs snug against the whole assembly and comes out here. Now we got the wire right here, and when the fender is on there, yeah, I think that's fine. So, when we look on the fender, there's two small holes right here, don't really need them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill one hole bigger to fit this doohickey and then the wire can go through there, over here, around here and then the light should be over here. Okay, hole is bigger, okay, fits snug and clean and we can run these wires through here and then we can attach the fender now i got some bolts but they are too long i didn't buy different ones so i'm gonna have to cut these down and mount the fender but i'm gonna do that off camera because it's so damn hot it's a heat wave right now and it's so annoying i really don't like the heat so when we come back this fender will be on here but not all the rest. So the fender is on here. The wire runs perfectly through here. So we can route it right here. It looks all clean and factory. I am happy. I took the liberty of drilling this hole because this is gonna sit here and the wire is gonna go through here and then connect to the light. Don't have a grommet for this. I left it at home, but I can swap that later don't need to take off the whole wheel so I can assemble this whole part and 
then not have to worry about taking the whole wheel out. Let's put this spring back in here. Okay, that's good. This installed. So it fits the whole back section is installed except for the fender now I can install the fender again my bolts are too long but I'm just gonna cut them okay the last bolts bolted up as you can see this is the whole back section back installed. We got our wires running from here inside the fender right here, coming out here, laying right here. Now there should not be any problems when this spring is compressed. Then it runs out here and then we can mount our tail light again. I know my wires are a little bit too long, but I can always adjust that. Still need a rubber grommet right here because that is gonna rub and cause issues but it looks nice now I'm gonna put the wheel back in and mount the tail light so the whole back section is back together it looks pretty nice I'm gonna put in the back wheel but because the new exhaust I cannot put something right under here so I got to use this it's a little bit trickier but once it's all mounted, it should be pretty easy. Normally, I would put the bike on its side and put the wheel in like that, but I don't want to lose any oil in the hub, so I'm doing it this way. It should work. It doesn't really go in too easy with the exhaust, so I'm gonna take off this sprocket so I have a little more room. So the whole rear section is back together. If I wanna keep this exhaust and make it serviceable, might do something about that fender. It's a little bit tricky to get the wheel in and out. You have to yeah, bend the fender to not scratch your exhaust, but it's manageable. It's just a little bit harder than it used to be. The wires, I got the wires tucked in right here. They run pretty good. This can stay right here for the moment. Now I got the original pulley on the here what i'm now gonna do i got here my jets i have from 90 to 64 there's a 70 right in here now gonna change that jet and we're gonna start the bike and uh, see how it goes take off the fuel line still need to address the fuel filtering system now let's take off the carb changing the jet on these bikes is a little bit of a hassle because you have to take a lot of stuff apart it's gonna be fun when i have all the jets that i needed and i have to do this multiple times okay take the 70 jet out of here one thing that i have to say if i'm gonna start tuning the carp i'm not gonna have to film it every time that I changed a jet. Now we're at the point that we can start the bike again, see how it runs with the 64 jet. It's not gonna run perfect, I know that. I still need to tune it, but this is the smallest jet that I have. It will sputter because the last jet, the previous jet that was in there was a 66 and we still had sputtering. So it's not gonna be the right mixture of air and fuel, but it's gonna be better than the 70 because the 70 blows out a lot of smoke i want to minimize that when i start the bike and go for test rides i'm gonna have to order some jets uh, i'm thinking about going as low as 52 or 50 uh, for 10 euro on jmpb parts this is pretty good i'm gonna do some small stuff that i don't need to film and then we can start the bike and see how it runs so i did some tiny stuff on the chow i secured this seat with bolts so when I take off the bike off the table, the seat won't hit me in the face. Also, I shortened the gas cable. Still need to cut this, but yeah. But when we turn it, the wires don't interfere or the cables won't interfere with nothing. And it can turn freely. Now, of course, I know myself when I'm gonna start the bike, 
I'm gonna try to ride it. Now, as you saw in my previous videos, when I started the bike, I have no brakes. The brakes are not installed. Well, the brakes are installed, but the cables are not installed. I got the levers, I got the brake shoes, but no cables. It's a little bit early to call it quits and, and wrap up this video. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install the rear brake cable. So I got my parts from jmpbparts.com. We got the connection for the brake and we got the rear brake itself. I'm gonna need this adjuster from the old one. And as I can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. Go through here, maybe out of here like this and then connect to this and then we can have a safe ride so let's check out our parts okay we need to pull this out this needs to go like this oh and i forgot we need this lock and key for the brake now this goes in here now put the sleeve back on it and we will see if we have to cut it so my best guess it's going through here yeah we're gonna need to take off this some of these days i'm gonna have to buy a small screwdriver to get this little screw out now route the cable through here and coming out here now the cable needs to sit right here so it's a little bit long and from what i can see this looks pretty good so now we have just this to connect okay let's take our kit how does this work again so what i think this here with that spacer goes over here then this goes here a little bit tricky when it's all new i mean that looks great see if the back wheel still rotates rotates freely and brake that's pretty good for me we got a brake again so we got a lot of done today it's pretty much rideable you can ride it well except for the lights I wouldn't go on the road new exhaust new engine new cables new tire no back tire didn't replace the front tire yet but it looks pretty nice now still need to do some work i know but she's looking at the bike again and i'm happy about that we are getting closer to the goal of riding this on the streets when the bike is complete i'm gonna do a full like bike check still need to do some tuning on the carburetor and on the variator springs get the right match she should be good so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna pour in some fuel let the bike run see how much it smokes with the 64 jet in it maybe ride it a little bit around to bed in the rear brakes because it's all new and then just see how it feels
that has created quickly everything that could have gone wrong went wrong i was not planning on removing the head today but after some testing it has to be done the engine has to come out let me tell you what happened so the last thing you saw was the engine was running everything was good of course what i did I went out riding. So I strapped on my helmet and went for a ride. Everything went good, good throttle control, but it was lacking something. It was sputtering like at high RPM. And suddenly it went and it went good. So I started my speed testing on my phone, full throttle, everything went nice, didn't sputter at all, nothing. Came back home, I looked at the data, and what I saw was that I only reached 84 kilometers an hour. Okay, the engine still needs tuning, could be okay. And then I looked down at the new exhaust and there was a lot of oil. It was just like something bursted and spit oil everywhere. So my first thought was, oh no, I blown a gasket. Well, it wasn't that. So I started looking where the leak was. So I, I run the engine, gave it a little bit of throttle, couldn't see anything. I couldn't see oil or gasoline or whatever you want to call it come out out of anything. Okay, maybe it solved itself. Maybe the exhaust pipe adjusted itself, created a nice seal. Or maybe I didn't blow a gasket. So. I went on another ride. Everything was perfect, good RPMs, good speed, nothing to worry about. Came back home, again, the exhaust was spitted on. And I'm like, something is leaking. Is it a blown gasket? Is it the exhaust that's not sealing enough? Something is wrong. So what I did, I started a leak test. So I pulled off the carburetor, connected the hose with the air compressor, sealed off the exhaust on the back side and applying some pressure. So I got some soapy water, sprayed where the exhaust meets the cylinder, and of course there were bubbles down there. Whew, what a relief, no broken gasket. So what I did, pulled off the exhaust and did the leak test again. Sprayed on the whole gasket, no broken gasket. Everything was perfect, but I was still hearing a small hissing sound so I was losing air somewhere so I start spraying the cylinder head and with a chow you have a decompression valve when you want to start the bike you pull the decompression get the engine going release the decompression valve you get compression and the bike starts now, as you can see he spit it all over this so I sprayed some soapy water on the cylinder head and of course it was leaking where the decompression valve is no biggie i got some rotating paste i can make it a good seal so i made it myself easy pulled off the head so i can take it home clean it up make it a good seal then i can pop it back on and everything is perfect then i discovered another problem a big problem and I don't know what to do about it is it normal is it not normal I will show you guys but something is wrong really wrong a complete project wipe who knows so now that the head was off I could check the inside and as I can see no major issues it's a little bit oily but no scratches, nothing at all. But when I was riding the bike, the bike shaked a lot. So something was rattling. First I thought it was the clutch. And then I started moving the piston. Now I don't know if this is normal. The whole piston is loose. So the piston got a lot of play and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Is it the piston rings? Is it something else? Did I get a wrong piston? 
16 years ago. I don't know. It is not good, guys. I'm gonna call it quits here. I'm gonna pull out the engine in the next video. Go over it. See what is wrong. Check the rings. Check the clearance. Check everything. If the piston moves that much, that can be right. I mean, it should be loose, but that loose that I can wiggle it around. No, that's that's not right. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'm sorry that it's all went this way. Don't know what I'm going to do with this project. If it's going to stay over, if it's going to go. If I need to buy a new cylinder, that is a lot of money. And I don't have that kind of money to spend in this bike. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next one.